If you watched my last video, you'll know I had a hard time in Cairo. Like, a really hard time. <laughs> but luckily, Cairo is not all there is to see in this beautiful country. And today, we're headed down south. Welcome to the ancient history capital of Luxor. <sighs> I'm really not much of a sunrise kind of person, but it's the only way you can get this all to yourself. Unless, of course, it's 2020, and this is actually sunset. And I have this entire Luxor temple, one of the most world famous temples, all to myself. Max. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Max. Now it's the experience I really dreamt of. This is really a freaking dream come true. This is a temple that's actually open super late. You can stay till 8 p.m. We just watched sunset, and now we're getting that beautiful blue hour where things get a little bit darker, a little bit moodier, and I really can't think of a more fitting time to see the temple. So Max just brought up a very valid point. Not only are these pillars and columns impressive, but just imagine how the heck a bunch of medieval ass dudes got them rocks all the way up there. It's insane, they didn't have motors, they didn't have electricity, all they had was a bunch of horses, pulley systems, and a lot of manpower. But these are massive, absolute towers. Come on in to the room here and look at this. Now I don't know if I've ever shared this on the channel, but I was actually a hieroglyphics major. I studied it for over a decade. It says, those who check the link down below and go through the one hour free training for content creators will absolutely transform their lives. It's insane. The Egyptians were true prophets. It's so cool in here at night, guys. They've got a full lighting system that have like this underglow and it actually kind of simulates this fire look, which is back in the day how they would have illuminated these temples. I really, really recommend you come and see the Luxor temple at sunset so you get both sides of it. You know, guys, all this time in this temple, I feel some sort of powers coming on me. I feel vlog power. Discover your own superpowers with the Lost Creator Academy. I'm not gonna lie, I have the best job in the world, but one of the things that I've never gotten used to is this irregular sleep schedule. Some days you get to sleep in, others you have a week back to back of four hour sleeps. Oh my god, today was definitely one of the harder ones. All right, all aboard the boat. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. <laughs> Lack of sleep, always worth it. Bit of a spoiler, that's where we're going. But the best part is, Hello. we've got Omar here, and Omar is filming a BTS for us. I will make a good video for my friend, and wait, we hope wait, to wait. see you. Me and Mr. Mahmoud, my friend, we hope to see you in Egypt. Wow, life's like so incredible, dude. Didn't think I'd ever be in a hot air balloon in Egypt, but this is a pretty epic place to do it, guys. There's just this split between the desert and this beautiful lush greenery. That right there is the Nile River, and everything that's around it is green. You can see just how important this river was to the early Egyptians to be able to get the agriculture, to feed their society. I think that's what constantly brings me back into appreciating this country, is just realizing how historically relevant Egypt was. And as a kid, I was always fascinated by Egyptian history, so to be here right now, it's such an incredible opportunity. Right over there is Hatshepsut Temple, the world famous, the staircase right there. It's hard to fly a balloon. But you know what's harder? What's harder? Yeah, yeah, to build a friendship. Really <laughs> We're landing in a bunch of plants. Oh, here we go! Good to see you, man. It's really awesome. Good morning. Good evening, Mr. LeBlanc. Welcome in our private bus. Have a seat, please. 
This is insane. Welcome to the Valley of the Kings, where a few dozen pharaohs have been buried over the centuries. It is not a coincidence that the pharaohs were buried at the base of this mountain that happens to look like a pyramid. This was their holy land. It was also chosen because of the fact that it could be protected from looters. People knew they could make a lot of money if they managed to break in here, so people would risk their lives for it. And today I'm gonna show you where they were buried. There's the tombstone right there. That's crazy. This is just one of maybe 40 or 50 tombs here in the Valley of the Kings. And so the pharaohs actually believed that if they were to be buried here and they had proper ceremony, then they would get eternal life. So this really means that those that weren't rich, that couldn't afford a tomb, couldn't afford the ceremony, were basically doomed to only perish after death. The pharaohs believed that what was in their tomb was what they brought with them into the afterlife, which is why these tombs are so magnificent. You can just get an idea of how colorful all this tomb would have been. Now this is Ramsey III's tomb, and another pharaoh that was killed by his wife. I'm starting to see a reoccurring theme here. Life lesson, maybe. And this is where he laid. If I were ever to get cursed, it would be in here. This is so sick. This is probably the coolest museum in the world. What I really love is that you can get right in there. Sometimes you go to museums and you feel this like massive divide between you and the history, but you're basically able to touch it. Don't do it, don't touch it, but you could. How crazy is it that we have this tomb to ourselves right now? This is just really one of the biggest gifts. I will never forget this. <laughs> Cats? Yes. No, thank you. No, thank you. Yes, cat. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Well, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Wait, how did he go from one to fifty? All right, everyone that survived the gift shop experience, bring it in. Celebrate. There's three of us. Oh, we lost. We lost Saul. The gift shop got him. These guys have really made this trip awesome. You survived! You made it through the gift shop! Bang! Sort of. <laughs> you bought something? <laughs> he started with 200, I got it for 25. So wow. that's why I bought it. You're less of a sucker. Yes. So there are breakfasts and then there's the Hilton breakfast. If you are not fast in Hichipsu, we are not gonna eat. We will starve today. So when you see a very cool statue and you think that'll get me Instagram likes, you think about the omelet you're giving up. We have one hour at most. Hope you enjoyed it. Shukran guys, keep up God's work. Inshallah. When's your next shift? Tomorrow 8 a.m. This is our final stop before that glorious breakfast. Hot chep soup. This is the temple to commemorate the most powerful woman of ancient Egyptian history. She reigned for 20 years. She was the first woman to do it. She was super, super cool. The architect of this wonderful temple was actually believed to be her secret lover. Juicy Casa. This place is so empty. I should make a music video. Yo, you wanna be in my rap? I'm doing a music video. People always asking me for the scoop. Let me let you in the loop. It goes hot chip scoopity boop. Welcome to hot chip soupity scoop. And that's for real. <laughs> you are not speedy. You are not fast. We are not gonna eat. We will start today. You think about the omelette. So, we missed breakfast. The truth is we got in 10 minutes late. Literally the chef got back in the kitchen and made us breakfast. I have to say I really love this hotel. I can't believe it is $20 more than a total dive that we spent our first night in. One quick tip guys is budget hotels in Egypt from my experience so far. You might have a basic room and I'm totally cool with that, but the thing you're not expecting is the headaches that it brings. People trying to upsell you things. We found out that our last hotel wanted $20 for internet in the room. I was like, it says internet in the room on the website and they're like, no, that's for the lobby. So they just try all these sneaky things to make that extra money out of you. Here's the crazy thing guys. Not only are things empty, things are super cheap right now. To stay here at the Hilton for one night in one of their basic rooms was 70 US dollars. 
it's wild. This is super coincidental. Actually, Ahmed, if you guys saw the first video, he showed us around in Cairo and he is staying at the same hotel. It's time to get on the water. Wow. She's thick. Wow. It's like a living room. What the freaking heck? Welcome home. Hello over there. So this boat is what's known as a Faluka. And if you take a look behind me, you'll notice a massive sail. And one of the strange things that you'll notice on the boat too is how wide the mass is. We were just told this is like the best weather you could ask for. Just a nice breeze that gives us the wind power we need to go see the Nile. Come and check this out. We've got a full sofra spread. One thing worth noting that you would have seen in video one is that we had a lot of issues in Cairo. And to be honest, here in Luxor, things are a lot more low key. It's been almost problem free. Not to say we don't get harassed a little bit because of our cameras, but it's been a lot easier to travel here. Just over there, guys, you can see the green of the West Bank where we flew our hot air balloon this morning. Hands down, the best moments in my life have come through my job being a photographer, a storyteller, a videographer, whatever you want to call it. And the crazy thing is, it was only five years ago that I just picked up my GoPro and had no idea how to do any of this. I taught myself, it took a lot of time, a ton of mistakes were made, but ultimately, a lot of passion and hard work got me to where I am today. And while it may have taken me five years, I want to help you get to your goals even faster. Skip the guesswork and check that free training link down below. I'll see you in the free training. No money for the... For the course but i still try the free trial every day a few times <laughs> till i save enough money i buy the whole package <laughs> this is so nice this is the dream amazing boat amazing location food friends everything now the sunset i could die here hitting workouts every single, almost every single day, despite traveling. And that's something I've been trying to incorporate into my travel lifestyle. It's something I'll keep you posted on. I wanna be held accountable to it. And because of that, I am so sore everywhere. So this is exactly what I need right now. Hello. Hello. If you got here for sunset, you'd be overlooking the Nile. It's pitch black right now. All right guys, I'll see you in one hour. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning from the Nile River. It's time to take you to a sunrise at one of the most, maybe the most iconic temple in the whole country. Good morning. Good morning. Egypt is one of those places where to get the full experience, you need an experience guide, and this is Hamdi. Hello, Hamdi. Hello. Hamdi is a expert here on ancient Egypt. Hamdi, I've never seen something more beautiful. I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about the fact that we have this entire temple to ourselves. The temple was supposed to open an hour ago and I have not seen anyone else here. It is only us, I'm not exaggerating, only us. There's no one else in the parking lot. You were here a year ago. It was full to the brim with tourists, so uh, there was a queue to go to every area in this temple and now it's empty. I guess it's the right time to tell you. I booked it out privately for you. Oh, that's so sweet. You shouldn't have. First of all, can I just say how crazy it is that the sunrise is right between the gates? Now, why that's so coincidental is because the Egyptians actually believed the sun originated here in Karnak. Egyptians had a lot of beliefs. They were very superstitious. They had a ton of gods. And so this is actually the religious capital, not just of Luxor, but of the entire country. And during certain periods of ancient Egypt, this was also their economic capital. This was basically the early government system of the entire country. How? I just, I, every time I see these temples, I'm just left with questions. And the only answer? Aliens. Now the one thing the ancient Egyptians had that we will never be able to re-experience is the color. The temples, the statues were vividly painted and that has sadly been worn away with time. Karnak Temple is actually the second largest temple in the world, which is crazy. It actually used to be the biggest until Angkor Wat came along. And with the temple being this big and this important in the Egyptian culture, it had over 800,000 people working here at one point. Insane. <laughs> 
So I don't personally know a ton about Egyptian food, but we've come here to the market where all of the freshest ingredients are found so that today we can cook our own home style Egyptian meal. This is pretty much as fresh as it will ever come. What are we cooking? We are cooking some baba ganoush, hummus, macaroni and cheese Egyptian style. Some eggplant dish that's really good. Ruby is a really, really good cook. She was making breakfast for the whole crew every morning when we were staying in Istanbul. A little Egyptian inspiration with this will be fantastic. Look at the squash. <laughs> Oof. What did he do wrong? I love how they have a fruit stand and next to it they have some random mug shot. That must be the doctor you keep away with the apple every day. That was a very crazy market experience. A lot of fun, a lot of color, and a whole lot of people. <laughs> that guy's been following us. I thought he was nice, but he's not that nice not anymore. So we're back here at Sofra, which is where we actually had dinner last night. If I had Egyptian family, I'm sure that's what it would have tasted like. And now after getting some fresh ingredients, they've invited us to come and prepare them here in the kitchen. Cleopatra of the kitchen. <laughs> Don't forget to call your mom. Wow. Moussaka. Oh, I love moussaka. Looks delicious, chef. Although I can't give you all the credit. Compliments to the chefs. How did I do? You came in and said hi and left. I thought you were a pyramid, man. Oh, well, Chris, it doesn't work like that. Fight! Real friends forgive each other. How is it, Saul? <laughs> wow. Fantastic. Mm. The food is spiritual. Hitting them with it. Shukran. Shukran. We are back and oh my gosh, this has to be one of the most beautiful pools in the country. Overlooking the Nile River, we've got the sunset going off. We just crushed an amazing workout. I'm gonna enjoy the sunset, get a dinner, go to bed because we've got a wake up call at 4 a.m. for something truly incredible. And guys, that's where I'll end today's video. If you enjoyed it, smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, and let's get lost again in the next one. Yo. Yeah. People wanna know the scoop, let me in you. Oh, let's do it again. People always ask me to put them in the loop, so I'm a good... One more time. People always asking me for the scoop. Let me let you in the loop. It goes hot, chip, scoopity boop. Welcome to hot, chip, soopity scoop. And that's for real. <laughs>